The United States presidential election of 1840 was the 14th quadrennial presidential election, held from Friday, October 30, to Wednesday, December 2, 1840. In the midst of the Panic of 1837, incumbent President Martin Van Buren of the Democratic Party was defeated by Whig nominee William Henry Harrison. The election marked the first of two Whig victories in presidential elections. In the previous election, the Whigs had been unable to field a single ticket, but in 1839, the Whigs held a national convention for the first time. The 1839 Whig National Convention saw 1836 nominee William Henry Harrison defeat former Secretary of State Henry Clay and General Winfield Scott. Van Buren faced little opposition at the 1840 Democratic National Convention, but controversial Vice President Richard Mentor Johnson was not renominated. The Democrats became the first and, to date, only major party since the passage of the Twelfth Amendment to fail to select a vice presidential nominee. Referencing Vice President John Tyler and Harrison's participation in the Battle of Tippecanoe, the Whigs campaigned on the slogan of, Tippecanoe and Tyler too. With Van Buren weakened by the poor economic conditions, Harrison won a majority in the popular vote and 234 of the 294 electoral votes. 42.4% of the voting age population voted for Harrison, the highest percentage in the history of the United States up to that time. Van Buren's loss made him the third president to lose re-election. The Whigs did not get to enjoy the benefits of their electoral victory. The 67-year-old Harrison was the oldest U.S. president elected until Ronald Reagan won the 1980 presidential election, and Harrison died a little more than a month after his inauguration. Harrison was succeeded by John Tyler, who proved to be disastrous for the Whigs. While Tyler had been a staunch supporter of Clay at the convention, he was a former Democrat and a passionate supporter of states' rights. As President Tyler blocked the Whigs' domestic legislative agenda, he was expelled from the party. Nominations <inaudible> 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 Topic: Democratic Party nomination. Van Buren, the incumbent president, was renominated in Baltimore in May 1840. The party refused to renominate his sitting vice president, Richard M. Johnson, but could not agree on an alternative, and so nominated no one. This remains the only time since the passage of the Twelfth Amendment that a major party failed to do so. In the Electoral College, the Democratic vice presidential votes were divided among Johnson, Littleton W. Tazewell, and James K. Polk. <laughs> Whig Party nomination Three years after Democrat Martin Van Buren was elected president in the election of 1836 over three Whig candidates, the Whigs met in national convention determined to unite behind a single candidate. The convention was chaired by Isaac C. Bates of Massachusetts and James Barber of Virginia presided over the convention. The party nominated the popular retired General William Henry Harrison of Ohio for president, the most successful of the three Whig presidential candidates from the previous election. Harrison, though a slave owner and aristocrat, was perceived as being simple and a commoner. The convention nominated former Senator John Tyler from Virginia for vice president. The two would go on to win the 1840 presidential election by defeating Van Buren. Because Harrison born in Virginia was considered a northerner as a resident of Ohio, the Whigs needed to balance the ticket with a southerner. They also sought a Clay supporter to help unite the party. Tyler was finally chosen by the convention after several southern Clay supporters had been approached but refused. Tyler had previously been the running mate of Hugh Lawson White and Willie Person Mangum during the four-way Whig campaign at the previous election. <laughs> Anti-Masonic Party nomination After the negative views of Freemasonry among a large segment of the public began to wane in the mid-1830s, the Anti-Masonic Party had begun to disintegrate. Its leaders began to move one by one to the Whig Party. Party leaders met in September 1837 in Washington, D.C., and agreed to maintain the party. The third Anti-Masonic Party National Convention was held in Philadelphia on November 13-14, 1838. By this time, the party had been almost entirely supplanted by the Whigs. 
The delegates unanimously voted to nominate William Henry Harrison for president who the party had supported for president the previous election along with Francis Granger for vice president and Daniel Webster for vice president. However, when the Whig National Convention nominated Harrison with John Tyler as his running mate, the anti-Masonic party did not make an alternate nomination and ceased to function and was fully absorbed into the Whigs by 1840. <inaudible> <inaudible> Liberty Party nomination The Liberty Party was announced in November 1839, and first gathered in Warsaw, New York. Its first national convention took place in Arcade on April 1, 1840. The Liberty Party nominated James G. Burney, a Kentuckian, former slaveholder, and prominent abolitionist, for president while Thomas Earl of Pennsylvania was selected as his running mate. <laughs> General election Topic. Campaign In the wake of the Panic of 1837, Van Buren was widely unpopular, and Harrison, following Andrew Jackson's strategy, ran as a war hero and man of the people while presenting Van Buren as a wealthy snob living in luxury at the public expense. Although Harrison was comfortably wealthy and well-educated, his «log cabin» image caught fire, sweeping all sections of the country. Harrison avoided campaigning on the issues, with his Whig party attracting a broad coalition with few common ideals. The Whig strategy overall was to win the election by avoiding discussion of difficult national issues such as slavery or the National Bank and concentrate instead on exploiting dissatisfaction over the failed policies of the Van Buren administration with colorful campaigning techniques. Log Cabin Campaign of William Henry Harrison Harrison was the first president to campaign actively for office. He did so with the slogan, Tippecanoe and Tyler too. Tippecanoe referred to Harrison's military victory over a group of Shawnee Indians at a river in Indiana called Tippecanoe in 1811. For their part, Democrats laughed at Harrison for being too old for the presidency, and referred to him as Granny, hinting that he was senile said one Democratic newspaper, "...give him a barrel of hard cider, and a pension of $2,000 a year and he will sit the remainder of his days in his log cabin." Whigs took advantage of this quip and declared that Harrison was "...the log cabin and hard cider candidate," a man of the common people from the rough and tumble west. They depicted Harrison's opponent, President Martin Van Buren, as a wealthy snob who was out of touch with the people. In fact, it was Harrison who came from a family of wealthy planters, while Van Buren's father was a tavernkeeper. Harrison however moved to the frontier and for years lived in a log cabin, while Van Buren had been a well-paid government official. Nonetheless, the election was held during the worst economic depression in the nation's history, and voters blamed Van Buren, seeing him as unsympathetic to struggling citizens. Harrison campaigned vigorously and won. Topic: Results. Harrison won the support of western settlers and eastern bankers alike. The extent of Van Buren's unpopularity was evident in Harrison's victories in New York, the president's home state, and in Tennessee, where Andrew Jackson himself came out of retirement to stump for his former vice president. Few Americans were surprised when Van Buren lost by an electoral vote of 234 to 60. But many were amazed by the close popular vote. Of 2,400,000 votes cast, Van Buren lost by only 146,000. Given the circumstances, it is surprising that the Democrats did as well as they did. Of the 1,179 counties, independent cities making returns, Harrison won in 699 59.29%, while Van Buren carried 477 40.46%. Three counties, 0.25%, in the South split evenly between Harrison and Van Buren. Harrison's victory won him precious little time as chief executive of the United States. 
After giving the longest inauguration speech in U.S. history about one hour, 45 minutes, in cool weather, Harrison served only one month as president before dying of pneumonia on April 4, 1841. This was the first election in U.S. history in which a candidate won more than a million popular votes. This was the last election where Indiana voted for the Whigs. It is also the only election where the Whigs won Maine, Michigan, and Mississippi. The election was also the last time that Mississippi voted against the Democrats until 1872, the last in which Indiana did so until 1860 and the last in which Maine and Michigan did so until 1856. Source Popular Vote, Lape, David. 1840 Presidential Election Results. Dave Lape's Atlas of U.S. Presidential Elections. Retrieved July 27, 2005. Source Electoral Vote. Electoral College Box Scores 1789-1996. National Archives and Records Administration. Retrieved July 31, 2005, a the popular vote figures exclude South Carolina where the electors were chosen by the state legislature rather than by popular vote. Geography of results Cartographic gallery Topic. Results by state Source, data from Walter Dean Burnham, Presidential Ballots, 1836-1892 Johns Hopkins University Press, 1955 pp 247-257 <laughs> Campaign songs, slogans Topic Harrison Tippecanoe and Tyler too. Topic Van Buren Rockabye, baby, daddy's a wig. When he comes home, hard cider he'll swig. When he has SWUG, he'll fall in a stew. And down will come Tyler and Tippecanoe, Rockabye, baby, when you awake, you will discover Tip is a fake. Far from the battle, war cry and drum, he sits in his cabin a drinking bad rum, Rockabye, baby, never you cry, you need not fear of Tip and his tie. What they would ruin, Van Buren will fix. Van's a magician, they are but tricks. Topic. Election paraphernalia Topic Electoral College Selection Topic In popular culture In the film Amistad, Van Buren played by Nigel Hawthorne is seen campaigning for re-election. These scenes have been criticized for their historical inaccuracy. See also History of the United States 1789 Second Party System United States House of Representatives elections, 1840 United States Senate elections, 1840 Inauguration of William Henry Harrison <laughs>